Highway 27 at 7.32 p.m. Uh, our first order of business is the approval of the meeting minutes from February 16th. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to take a look. Any questions, comments, changes? I have a, I have a question. Okay, on the, on the um, about the capital policy with Bridgewater, you know, with the school district. Yep. We, we mentioned that we wanted to bring it, um, have the attorney look at it, but I don't see that in the minutes. I know it said we had questions with Mr. Wood, but should we note that, you know, we're waiting to hear from the attorney or that, does that not matter? Uh, you know what? I mean, we can have Josh add it because uh, that that request was made by two of our um, committee members. So we can amend uh, the uh, minutes to reflect that. Um, and you, you'll see that that has been, that has been addressed to Julie a little bit later on. Okay. All right, so do you want me to make the motion? Make with motion with an amended. There you yeah, go. with the amendment that um, that order mentions that we were requesting the the uh, attorney look it over. So, something to do with the attorney. I'm not really sure how you want to word it, Josh. But yep, no problem. Thanks for bringing that up. Thank you. All right, do we have a second? Second. We can do a roll call, Josh. And if you weren't here, just abstain, please. Roll call, Josh. Nate. Aye. Julie. Aye. Steve. He was new. Yep. Steve. Abstain. Yep. Um, MJ. I abstain. Chris. Aye. Thank you. The motion was approved. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the next order of business is public comments. We have any public comment? I don't see anybody here, but if we do, uh, Please state your name and your street address for the record. Anybody? Okay, not hearing any public comments. Uh, just real quick before we start, uh, I'm sure some of our uh, more veteran members will notice we have a new member this evening, uh, Steve Pace. Uh, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, Steve. Um, this is your first meeting, I believe. It is. Thank you, guys. Steve Pace. Great. Uh, and we do have another new member, Brian Glidden, who's joined us for one meeting, but he can't make it tonight because he's stuck in New York. Um, you know, tonight, Steve, if you want to just listen along, if you want to participate in the conversations, uh, obviously you can. Uh, we don't have a whole bunch of excitement from the evening that I can see here, uh, and we will get started. So our first order of business is FY23-048, acceptance of the LFTF grant for the Styles and Heart Parkland project. Uh, I see the word grant which means free money for the town, Lori, correct? Um, yeah, that's correct. Um, this is in conjunction with um, about five or six other grants that Michael and his team have procured for the, um, oh no, the, actually this is Styles and Hot. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Getting confused with um, High Street Dam. Um, this one actually, Styles and Hart Parkland is a state grant um, that, they were going to add on to that whole big project that Mr. Wood's been um, involved with for like 10 years and a lot of members of the CPA committee. So this is great money. You did already approve um, some money from the CPA funding for I think 1.2 million, but that was with the um, caveat that they knew this grant would be coming along. So this money will um, actually lessen the cost of the CPA money and that money will go back in for another project for whatever is not spent out of that original appropriation. So it's good news. Okay, thank you, Lori, for, for that update. Uh, it is appreciated. I, I did see reading through the order that this has to all be signed off on by March, correct? Mm -hmm. Or highlight somewhere in there. So the, the clock yes. is on this one. Okay, uh, any questions, comments from the committee on this order? No. Is it? Will this be the final grant? You said that the CPC knew that we were getting something else. Is this the only one that we're we were waiting no. on? Um, actually, you, there was already an appropriation approved for one point two million for the. I think the project in total is about one point about around a million. So the CPA went ahead and and put the money out there so we could get started with the project knowing that they had applied for this grant that will 
be used in lieu of the whole 1.2. So the, the money unused in the CPA portion will go back to the, the buckets that it was to, it was um, approved from. So do we have to make any kind of motion or anything for that or it just automatically goes back there or how do yeah no you won't have to do anything so this grant you know we'll spend this grant funds first uh and then whatever's left over out of the cpa the committee will just vote to have it restored to the whatever particular buckets i think this was an open space bucket and some of it was undesignated when the original vote but wherever the original monies came from it goes back into those buckets right by a vote, though, at some future date, is that? Yeah, not by not by you at the CPA, um, mm -hmm. and and any actually, when a, when a project's complete, any you know, you, you, we don't need a council vote to put the money back. We just need the the, you know, the original co CPC committee or the town manager can put any of that funding back to the original. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, we'll see it when we get reports, the quarterly reports or something like how will we see it I guess um so probably um one of Michael's updates at the town council meetings or you know if you want to watch this project closely I think um the CPC committee has some um agenda updates on their meetings but you know we since since it's spent out of the CPA it's it's not out of the um the town financial reporting budget. packet okay. that you guys get but we certainly can, you know, you can track the CPA projects as well. That can be added to any of the packets. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Julie. Good questions as always. Anybody else? Motion to approve, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Second, MJ. Second from MJ, thank you. Josh, if we could do a roll call, please. Nate. Hi. Julie. Hi. Chris? Aye. MJ? Aye. Steve? Aye. Thank you. The motion was approved. All right. Thank you, everyone. Moving on to our next order of business, FY23-005, uh, funds review resolution. Uh, so we can see here pretty clearly the town council requests its budget and finance committee, which is made up of three members of the town council, uh, Mr. Wood, Mr. Gallagher, and Mr. George, I believe, is the third member. Um, and the Bridgewater Financial Committee asks to review the town's capital and stabilization funds and make any recommendations for changes to the town council by October 1st, 2023. So this is what we do. Um, do, do we happen to know what the thought process was coming out of the town council? Why they would like to have this review or? Um, Michael's sick, so he would have been here to speak more on this. Um, However, I believe, you know, not speaking directly at, or being at the council, I believe, um, you know, just with, with the establishment of the new um, marijuana revenue stream uh, and an order that you guys approved probably in your last meeting that is going to establish its own stabilization fund that the marijuana revenue will directly be credited towards and used for the specific purpose so I think when that was set up you know they the council members were talking about just getting a handle on all the different stabilization and savings account that the towns that you know that the town currently has and we we have about uh we have three stabilization funds we have an open and some trust funds so probably about eight that we put the buckets in that you'll see when you do your free cash when when we put the free cash orders before you that we you know disperse that out I know Tony's talked extensively I know for the new people it's good to know um, as we go through the budget process um, where the money is estimated from and how we try to you know make some savings estimates so that we can fund all the capital needs and and other needs as they do come up with the town so okay. I don't think this has to be voted right away but right. it is for, up for discussion and I don't know if maybe you might want to have a joint meeting with the budget and, and finance subcommittee to talk more in depth um, and wait for Michael and Tony to come back and maybe give you a lot more detail on on this particular resolution 
Right. Yeah, my question would have been like, is it new? I mean, is this not something we've done? You know, I haven't been on the budget resolution committee before, right? With you and Eric, Nate, how is this different, I guess? No, it's not that, Julie. I think they want, you know, I mean, MJ, uh, you can speak to this. If we go back in the time machine, we didn't have these funds, uh, these buckets of yeah. uh, money that was here in the past. So I think that, I think we're actually in a good position now where we, we have so many maybe that we want to look at the efficiency of it. Um, yeah. Your thoughts, MJ? Uh, yeah. I'll be honest. Um, this is sort of, sort of a new bit of territory, but in so far as when we were dealing with things early in in the earlier day of this committee um when i was still secretary um the town was really just more or less establishing what they wanted to do practices policies and procedures uh, because we were just getting everything all together with the new form of government i i i want to say myself personally from this perspective <clears throat> is that this is our Uh oh, she froze. Or at least just I couldn't hear. Yeah, I think they. That... But I don't want to. I don't want to completely like conjecture on things. I yeah. certainly would welcome a conversation with Mr. Dutton and um, the counselor that actually proposes, which I believe was Mr. Gallagher. So I would. I would mm -hmm. love to have the budget and finance subcommittee here, Mr. Chairman. If that's something that you could have Josh um, see if we could do, I would. I would gladly entertain their 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 presence because I'd like to I'd like to know that for certain. I know that we've done certain things over the last ten years, but I'd like to make sure that we are being consistent in our message on that. Simply because we do have a lot more different revenue streams than we did ten years ago, and we want to be able to improve upon those and make them more efficient. Yep. So you're you're suggesting that we 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 continue this resolution and have a conversation in junction with the with the budget subcommittee. I think in order for us to be on the same page with our colleagues on the council and also the town manager yeah. and what policy decisions we're working for. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. The more I think about this, um, I think I agree with you. Today. And it, other thoughts on this, the committee? Yeah, MJ, you kind of faded out at one point, but I think I got the gist of based on your what I did here. Um, I agree with that. I think it's I think it's important to be on the same page and I think it's important, but I also think it's important to understand this is very short and sweet and I feel like it's more complex than the few sentences that are in the order. Yeah, and, and Julie, definitely from that perspective, I'm, I'm definitely a long-term, long game type person. So I want to be able to see if something's saying establishing reasonable standards related to management of financial system. I want to make sure if this is going to be a long-term goal or if it's going to be a short-term goal, what are we specifically working with? I think having everybody here at the same time would be beneficial to both parties. Correct. Right. Because if you're talking about the marijuana thing, you know, that might not come to fruition for a long time. So if that's the purpose for it, then it's, you know, there's other things to address than just that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. It yeah, makes, sense. makes sense to me. Uh, does anybody else, are we thinking along the same lines of the rest committee? Can I just say one more thing? Um, so basically, it's a it's this resolution is in conjunction with your budget re resolution. And if you go back to that um, resolution that you guys kind of go through every year, you know, there's there's a percentage that you usually estimate based on the budget numbers that you want to put away in the stabilization fund. So there is like a stabilization fund that's the main one that's kind of the town's um, savings account that you know you estimate to put money away for for different um, for rainy day or, or or whatever and then along with that you know you're you're estimating your budget and your revenue so that you have to reach you know ten percent of the budget that's put away into the stabilization and then you put, want to put five percent into the capital stabilization to fund the capital outlay and pay as you go. Um, equipment and then the only other stabilization fund now also that we've been we've established over the last few years is a one-time unforeseen stabilization fund meaning like we'll take a little bit and put some money away and um, you know for things that come up during the fiscal year that are unex unexpected or, or one-time or if we got a one-time revenue hit in in a fiscal year at the end of 
the close out, you can go back when the free cash is certified and take that one time revenue and then put it away for for whatever, you know, it came in for. So, I mean, with free cash, you you usually you're putting so you're putting away basically we get five accounts that we've mainly used in the last few years. The main stabilization fund, which is the the savings, um, the OPEB account, which is the liability, the you know other post employment liabilities, and then the capital stabilization, and then the one time unforeseen stabilization, and then recently we've been putting some money into a trust fund for sick and retirement leave liability. So those are the main ones that the free cash buckets have been broken out. Instead of putting it all in one place, we're trying to like make sure we're we're preparing for funding different things and not just taking it out of our savings. So hope that helps everyone a little bit. Yes, thank you. Josh, is the budget subcommittee meeting next Monday? Um, yeah. Let me check. I wonder if we could get an invite to their meeting. But Normally they meet right before. Um, I'm sorry, MJ. We can say something. That's okay. No. No, no. So I think we're we're gonna we're gonna table uh, this resolution for this evening. No, they're not meeting next Monday. But we're gonna continue okay. it. So we'll uh, my table continue it. My table continue. Um, and what we'll do, Josh, is we'll extend an invite to uh, the budget subcommittee to join us, um, just so this is a little clearer and that we are moving all four on the same page. And there's no mm -hmm. reason why we both can't make our recommendation that same evening, too. Um, I would think, if they meet jointly with us, um, that sound like a plan for the committee. I don't hear any serious objections. That's what we'll do. Uh okay, let's Mr. Chairman, do we need yeah. a motion? Do we need a motion to continue our table for the time being? Uh, we do not. We're not tabling just to continue. We don't need a motion. We had asked this last week with Mr. Dutton. Okay. Right, Josh, if I remember correctly from that conversation. All right. That's it's what we did time. with the capital thing. With the capital thing. Okay. Thank you. Capital yep. order. Yep. That's right. Because you asked that same question, Julie. <laughs> Great minds think alike, MJ. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I can. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to our old business, uh, which is FY23-009, the capital expenditure policy. Uh, at our last meeting, we did discuss this uh, in depth. Uh, the big concern that came from two of our, our committee members, and really all of us, um, was that you know the town attorney have a chance to review this wording, this document, uh, making sure we weren't running afoul of the regional agreement um, and that the wording was correct. Um, he did do that, Josh. I don't know if you can pop that document up for everybody to see with the uh, town attorney's changes. Ah, there we go. So as you can see, he did go through it. He did change some of the language um, in here, uh, so that could meet the requirements uh, that this finance, that the committee did ask for. And if we do have a motion at some point in this conversation, I'd ask that you just make the motion amending it to include the town attorneys. Uh, before, sorry, Nate, before yeah. we vote on this, can I ask a question or do you want to have it oh, on no, the- No, 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 sure. We can, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ask, ask so one question I have is, um, I understand the purpose and I think we're all in agreement that we want to make sure the money is spent the way it's supposed to be spent. But I question, um, we do because we also had the debt exclusion with BP on there. So on last last meeting, so I'm wondering if are we expecting the same kind of a policy for the BP capital funding as well, or are we just targeting the BR district? Do you understand my question? No, I do understand your question, and that's because I think we touched on this last time as far as capital improvements that are made at like Bristol Plymouth or Bristol Aggie that it comes out of their their fund. It doesn't work the same as the regional agreement. I know that, Julie. Okay. I, I don't think that they have to, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think any of those other schools have to. Yeah, approach, well. We approach it the same way when it comes to capital. 
Yeah, we haven't. We because we we just get an assessment for the schools um, and the capital. We've been breaking it out with, you know, more recently with BR trying to take it out of the, you know, their operations budget. Yeah, so when we do the assessment for the get the assessment from BP, we don't know whether it's capital or not. We just give them what they ask for. I mean, what kind of what kind of record keeping do we get from them? Mike mentioned last week that our last meeting that the reason we're one of the reasons we're doing this policy was so we're war um I don't know for the for audit purposes. So if we ever got mm -hmm. audited. So when it comes to BP in an assessment, what kind of documentation do we provide an auditor for that assessment number? Well, it's kind of a newer, newer thing in the last few years that's come to light with all the communities because, you know, the capital um, needs were never broken out with all the regional districts. So um, now everyone's doing a better job of breaking apart the, the overall cost. So I think that's one of the reasons why they're they're that we're looking at actual policy for all the agreements. But yeah, it used to be all in one one assessment. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. So we're getting a policy for the Bridgewater Random District. And I guess my question for Mike or what or Bill or whoever created this order, um, or Tony even is, you know, should we anticipate the same kind of policy for BP for assessments if we are trying to be, you know, truly transparent and audit ready and things like that? Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, you might it may not be a question for you, but it's a question that I have. Yeah, because well, yeah, because the, the debt exclusion votes are a little different because that's for the new building. So that's like a debt service vote, um, not not necessarily, you know, capital maintenance and equipment for like upkeep of. And, and plus with with BR, we have town buildings that, you know, the, the town owns and infrastructure and, and that kind of thing for each of the schools in our town. And Raynham has the same with theirs. So, you know. So if it wasn't a, new, wasn't a new school, and, and right now, like if before the new school gets built or before it was built, how how would it work with BP if they ha did have a capital expense? Like how we would didn't get any notice of any capital in, inside the assessment at all with those with those regionals, because you know we're just sending our student there. We're, we're not the hometown of the building. Okay. So, all right. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Chairman. Yes, MJ. Uh, I don't know if the I don't know if this question was answered in the previous meeting since I, I wasn't present, but I know Lori sort of alluded to it. This is something that's sort of been developed in the last years. What particularly was the genesis for it for us in particular? Because you know, just looking at it from the outside of it, the initial paperwork that was in our packet and seeing this adjusted language. I'm not so much worried about running afoul of Bridgewater Rainham Regional School District. I'm more concerned about haven't we been getting invoices from the district in years past, regardless of this type of policy, absent a policy in place. You know, I I do sort the mail occasionally for the office that I work for in another municipality, and we get invoices from our school districts, which usually say the assessed amount on it. I'm not. I'm kind of a little hazy and a little ambivalent towards this particular policy as it relates to Bridgewater because one, we have a real agreement. Two, our budget each fiscal year requires us to give them a certain amount, which then eventually is broken out into capital costs and expenditures. Is this for emergency purposes? Is this for normal expenditures for capital um, purposes? Or is this some newer capital expenditure item altogether that negates normal, regular, or emergency purposes, because I don't know if it's been articulated in the last meeting again, forgive me if I'm joining on, but I'm a little, I'm a little like ambivalent considering this tonight. And I'm, I just want a little bit more right. of like a background and understanding about why we're, we're talking let, about this. Let, let me, cause we did bring it up and Lori, you can correct me if I'm wrong afterwards. Uh, what triggered this in the bigger picture was the money that was originally uh, allocated for the track at there at the high school was not mm -hmm. used for that. And it was reallocated for other stuff. But what ended up happening is they gave us back the money, right? And then we gave it back to them. 
Correct. Yes, so this, this correct. is addressing things like that. And so basically what we're trying to do is if a school, if something's allocated to the school for capital uh, expenditure and it's going to be used for something else, we'd like to see that reflection. Because it's possible that we get audited. The town's like, hey, you gave this capital expenditure for a track. They didn't do a track, <laughs> you know. But to, but it, Nathan, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, because yeah. I I believe it was my understanding that they did get the quote three, you know, the number of quotes that they typically need. They, and did. they did present yep. it to the district. I mean, yep. to the town council, yep. which is why they approved it. Yep. And then in one of their a subcommittee meeting prior budget subcommittee after that they found the money somewhere else i'm not sure if it was covid money or whatever Something and then like they that. worked with mike and tony and the town council told them yep. how much money to give back and they did and yep. yes then they will reallocate the money for something else but that's, that's right. something else they also provided an invoice for so yep. mj my take on it is they did they just they did provide what they needed they found the funds somewhere else they returned the money and then we reallocated other money repurposed it but again with invoices um bill would alluded to there might have been like a, a discrepancy in how much they gave back and how much they caught it cost but it's my understanding that they gave back what mike and tony told them they needed to so i, I mean i could but, be wrong and they're not here to say that but 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 uh, um through you mr chairman to to julie then in my eyes that sounds I don't want to sound insulting or anything uh, or or like condescending on it, but that sounds more like a school district problem than the town's problems. So I'm not sure why if the school district did something that was a mistake, they that we're having to do the policy to fix a mistake that they made, that they, you know, the, the concept of found money has a very loaded term is a very loaded maybe term i historically. used the wrong term i'm just saying they well, no, they... no 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 I, I understand i understand that julie but to me the concept of just even that being alluded to even or intimated or in the concept of it because it does almost sound like oh well we did find money through arpa funds or something like that the fact that we got assessed the funds then we sent them the funds and then all of a sudden oops we can't really use those funds it really should have been an issue on their end for a policy issue to be fixed on the school district side. And ultimately the money should have come right, back. They, to could, they could have used, I, I think they could have used that money as we allocated to them, to your point, and then maybe use wherever money they used it from, mm -hmm. they could have used that for the next project. I don't know, because I'm, I'm not on that committee, but and to also, your point. If they, did use ARPA, if they did use ARPA funds to do the track, I'm not even sure if that's, I know that's a prudent use, but I no, don't see didn't. how that could be a best. No, I don't think it's, I don't even know what aqua funds are. Yeah, let's but. not get on tra off track about, you know, the regional consul system there. But, you know, I get your point. I get where, you, where you're heading to with this. You know, this is something too. Uh, Mr. Wood said this isn't anything that we have to do right now. Uh, it, it's not uh, critical. Um, this is something that we can also, we can continue it again. Um, and we have our joint meeting with the budget subcommittee. That could be a great time to have an in-depth discussion with them too. Uh, I definitely understand the the, the concerns uh, of the committee members on this. Uh, are there other committee members that have any thoughts on this? Disagree, don't agree with, you know, uh, continue it to. I can just make a comment that. Um, Go ahead, Lori. Um, thanks. Um, Tony and Kathy Macedo worked really close trying, you know, establishing the, the capital plan and the back and forth of, of getting all of the documentation and, and having us on the same page. So it, it was it, it was a, a good couple of years for us to get get right with with what the school had and what we had and, and be on track. And I think with the track problem, um, it was timing because originally the um, order came up in the fall. I forget um, the fall of fiscal 22. And then I think that the use was different. It, it wasn't the track, it was something else. So they the, the order went back and forth around um, in, in your committees for, you know, in the budget and subcommittee and and, and the in your committee because the purposes were changing because because it was all fluent and and all these projects usually are. But Anyway, I think um, by the time the order got changed and voted, it was already the spring. 
And I think when the order was voted at the time, the fiscal 23 budget was voted in April or March for the school in which they did repurpose the, their, you know, excess and deficiency funds for the track and the tennis courts. And it was because, I, I don't know, maybe they didn't get the money in the, from the town in time. I, I don't know. I think it was a lot of timing and it was a lot of fluency in the quotes and um, how the capital order was actually um, going through its process. So I think it was, the, and I think this policy is just to help us going forward to make sure that everyone's on the same page before any money leaves and, and everybody has all the documentation. And so I think that might be, I hope that that helps a little bit with the history of, of some of this work that's being done. Okay, thank you, Lori. Mm -hmm. Is that so? What's the thought process here for the committee? Well, I Do mean, like looking at looking at the lot, the very last line. I mean, I think there's other people that aren't here that were involved in last month's vote. Like, if you look at two, three, I mean, the lawyer crossed out specific and put general i mean right there that's a i mean had we voted on this last week without having him look at it um i you know i just think i think that's a big that's not a, a housekeeping error changing a word from specific to general i mean i think that that last line tells us what we're what we're trying to achieve and make sure that you know the money is used for the things that i don't i don't think there was any misuse of funds and I, and I do no. well, you know I think I they mean? have to follow the law of, of how Correct. the vote can be done too. So I think that's where he was looking from that, that perspective. Right, right. Because I'd hate to think that, like you said, in all these years, MJ, that we've been, you know, arbitrarily approving things without the proper documentation. I mean, that would be a wouldn't look good on any of us. No, um, I don't think that's the case. At <laughs> so all. that's not <laughs> right. Right. Um. Yeah, I from, mean, I, I'm open. From my, from my point of view, I'd be open to just continuing it. If if that's the will of the committee, I'd be supportive of continuing it until we meet with the, the proponents of this particular ordinance proposal, just so that we're all on the same page. Okay. Right. If I don't hear any major objection to that, I mean, obviously somebody can make a motion if they wish, um, but if not, we will continue this and to our next meeting vote that will be with the budget subcommittee it would be nice uh you know it, it was helpful the last meeting that mr wood was here um right because he didn't have some of the lawyer look at this prior to that meeting so i'd like to to you know what mj just said you know getting his thoughts on the corrections since yeah. he was the original you know one of the co-authors of the order you know, he, he did he did mention to the email that me and Josh got um, from Mr. Dutton. I uh, did make the mention that Mr. Wood had read it and had had no issues. Good to know. <clears throat> All right. So at this point, uh, let's continue um, this along with uh, our resolution. Um, our next meeting would be what josh what the 13th is that right yeah the uh, council meets next on the 7th they meet in the 7th okay so we'll have some other business and then if we can try is the budget so they're not meeting on the, the 13th they're meeting on the 6th right i oh, know they're not meeting the no they usually meet um, probably the 7th yeah they usually probably. meet right before their meeting oh do they okay i thought they were meeting on mondays for a while so that's my confusion Okay, so our next meeting would be the 13th then, March 13th. Yep. And we, we'd have two uh, objects for the business. Uh, Josh, do you need me to send you an email asking to invite the budget subcommittee to that meeting? Uh, if you wouldn't mind, and then I can just uh, forward it along. Okay. That works. Okay. Uh, right. we, uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. So <laughs> we are. Uh, Business additional items for discussion. We just got stuff on next meeting date. Uh, does anybody else have anything? Just as a heads up, Nate, I will not be able to attend that that uh, the meeting on the thirteenth at okay. one that night. So, all right. Thank you for for letting the committee know, Chris. Appreciate it. 
But with that, motion to adjourn. Thank you, Chris. Second. Thank you, MJ. If we could do a roll call, please, Josh. Nate. Aye. Julie. Aye. Chris. Aye. MJ. Aye. Steve. Aye. Thank you. The motion was approved. The meeting's adjourned. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. I'll send you that email, Josh. Great. Thanks a lot. Good night.